There was no red carpet in evidence outside the Curzon Cinema this week for the London premiere of the climate blockbuster The Age of Stupid. But for the hundreds crowding inside, there was a palpable sense of anticipation. Three years in the making by Franny Armstrong, Lizzie Gillett, and a huge number of movie professionals who were working for next to nothing. Have they got a hit on their hands, or would it be a flop? You know, if any of you have got any suggestions or comments or anything like that, any you know, little changes or anything, don't tell me them because it's finished. <laughs> We could have saved ourselves, but we didn't. It's amazing. What state of mind were we in to face extinction and simply shrug it off? Pete Postlethwaite looks out over a dying planet in 2055, and he looks back at the people of our time and asks why we did nothing about climate change while there was still time. So I'd probably rename that age uh, something like the... Uh, the age of ignorance, the age of stupid. I can't reveal how the film ends, but I did ask people as they came out how they felt after watching it. I was so moved. I was nearly in tears at the end. Uh, I don't know what else I can say. And I hope it's going to change my life and I'm going to change other people's lives by it. Yeah. The film today is absolutely fantastic seeing the screening. We were very emotional. Uh, I think I remember crying a tiny little bit in Inconvenient Truth, but today I was weeping, full weeping. I'm really puffy from crying, um, but yeah, I thought it was it was the most powerful thing I've ever seen as an adult in my life. And I think it was the way it um, was combining all the footage of real people and the news footage, and then the projections of the future. It was just devastating. <laughs> I've just been in the toilets and seen other women like splashing their faces with water and redoing all their makeup because they've all been crying as well. <laughs> uh, I thought uh, Age of Stupid is absolutely fantastic. It blew me away. I was shaking. Uh, most of the way through it. Uh, it's emotionally very rich. Uh, it creates, it paints a, a picture of what's really going on uh, in people's heads and uh, what's going on in the world. And I think it, it obviously creates a very alarming picture of what will happen if we don't sort climate change out, if we don't take big concerted action to deal with the problem uh, in the near future. I was totally blown away by it. It's a fantastic film and everybody should see it. Everybody should see this film and get out and do something about it afterwards. I thought that the brilliance of it was in the characters and how each one of them seemed to embody something that was deeply true. Um, we were just saying that there's someone Western, then the guy, I forget his name, um, but who works for the oil company in New Orleans. You know, he, he was brilliant because he so perfectly embodied the contradictions of our society. He worked for the oil industry, he had, but then had this going toe-to-toe -to -toe with nature and living with the consequences of it. And also was deeply against a lot of the way in which we've exploited the planet's resources, but was helping it to happen. So we completely identified with him. But then again, someone like Jay Wadia in India also embodied the contradictions that they have there in the ambition and desire for development um, but allied with the sort of problems that's going to bring and I think the other characters did that as well um, in in Nigeria you had this young woman who who was ambitious and also wanted to give something back to her community but you know really desired the kind of lifestyle that had caused so many of the problems in her own community so it was just it was so global and had such breadth and each of the characters was you know just ideal for, for the message um, it was very thought-provoking, as in, it made me think, you know, most of my friends were so fixated on getting a car and buying the latest, you know, Xbox, and realistically, people my age, 18, 19, we don't, we don't think of what's the, what, could that actually happen? Could this actually happen? And that's very scary because that means it will happen in my lifetime. And you tend to just think, oh, I'll be all right. You don't think about the future. You don't think about your, you know, your kids or their kids. I think it was particularly Ferno and his grandchildren, great-grandchildren, the thought that there is no future. It's unbearable, really, that we've done this out of our, our um, well, just fear and thoughtlessness and selfishness and competitiveness and uh, 
it's a short sightedness. Um, so if we can really stop and think what we're doing long term, it would make all the difference and something to really I mean it's just something worth worth doing at last. This is what matters and we've all got to get behind it and do what we can. And we can turn it around, but not unless we just really do it. And this film really brings it home again and again and again and again, very, very movingly and powerfully and beautifully. And it does make me think. It, oh, it actually is making me think about changing my career as well. So, yeah, yeah, a huge impact. And I'm trying to tell my friends, but they've got their blinkers on. Yeah, in, in terms of showing how climate change is having such a wide uh, impact, it's, it's hitting everybody all over the world in very, very different ways. It's probably the best example I've seen. Of that. No, most of them have been quite specific, looking at particular issues in particular places, but actually seeing them all pull together is, well, very powerful, extremely powerful. And the age of stupid has gone beyond inconvenient truth to a new level of, of, of communication, motivation, and both emotional and realistic evaluation of climate change. A huge um, extra piece of armament, if you like, in our communication strategy for enabling the world to wake up and take responsibility. Yeah, the reactions today have been incredible. There's still a woman crying in the toilets, and there's a couple of young people here who just were blown away, two 15-year-olds. They both bought the T-shirts. They want to take it to their school, all that kind of thing. But I guess just the overwhelming feeling of pride, and I think that people say, people have said in the past that the film's not hopeful enough, but that's because it reflects the situation realistically, which is pretty dire. But the way in which the film has been made is the most hopeful, inspiring story you could possibly hope for. You know, people with no cash, making a film they believe about. Everybody's come together, and you see the results on screen. There was a certain poignancy in the setting of the party that followed in a fin de siècle restaurant that was closing down the following day. So are these the last generations of humankind dancing their way to oblivion? Or are they going to help us all wake up in time? I guess all we can do is have faith. I gotta have faith. I gotta have faith. to actually get on and do something and obviously that was the most important part and it's really succeeded there so time for some action